this training, we're going to discuss creating a new company file. So the first time you open up QuickBooks, it's going to come up with this screen here. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new company. All right. Now you have a couple of options here. You can go through the QuickBooks interview, which is right here. If you're a QuickBooks expert, you can go ahead and skip the interview and just create the base account or base file. And that is shown in another video. Or you can come in here and convert data from other accounting files. So if you're converting from Quicken, Peachtree, Small Business, business Accounting, or Office Accounting, you can convert the data here. Again, that's in another video. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and start our interview. The first screen here, it asks you for your company information. All right, if there's a different legal name, go ahead and capitalize this C. Capitalize this C here. What my tax ID number is. All right, save that there. What my street address is. Okay, in town, Alaska, one one five seven eight. What country? My phone number. My fax number. Email address and website. This information is very important because. When you are creating your forms, your invoices, this is the information that it's going to pull out. Now, if you don't have this information at the time you're setting up your QuickBooks file, it's okay. There's an opportunity inside of the file to go in and change this. Or, for example, if you move, of course, you can't be expected to start a new QuickBooks file every time you move. So that information would be here. Okay. Then you're going to go in and choose your industry. What industry are you going into? The reason that this is helpful is when you're going through your interview, first, when you set up your chart of accounts, they're going to give you a sample chart of accounts for that industry. When you're setting up your different, you know, do I do estimates? Do I collect sales tax? Tax. This is going to be a way for QuickBooks to kind of guide you. But this is not saying that it's going to be set up 100% based on how into it in QuickBooks feel your industry should be set up. You're going to have the choices and you can always change it later as your business changes. So I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, manufacturing company. Say next. Here's where I choose how my company is set up. My sole proprietor, partnership, LLC, single member or multi-member, corporation, C-Corp, and S-Corp, nonprofit or other. Now, of course, they always have all these helpful hints here. Okay. So which business entity should I choose? Can I get some answers? I don't know what this means, but basically when you start up your business, uh, if you filed for paper, short paperwork in a partnership, LLC, S corp or corporation, or you just be a sole, sole proprietor where this matters the most is that when you're an S corp, you fill out form 1120 S. So when, when you set up your accounts and your chart of accounts, they're going to be auto set up to go to which line item they should go towards on the form 1120S. But if you choose sole proprietor, it's going to be set up for which line items each account should go to on the form 1040. So that's why this is an important choice. You want to make sure that you choose the right one here. So I'm going to choose S Corp for now. The next is you decide what's the first month of my fiscal year. Most businesses, it's January. If you haven't filed or requested to have a different month start date, then your fiscal year starts in January. The way to think about this also is when does your new year start? So when you file your taxes, is it from January to December or is it from March to February? If it's from March to February, your fiscal year starts in March. Why this is important is because of reports. If you want to run this fiscal year in your reports and you're beginning, you put March in here, it's going to run from March to February for this fiscal year. Okay. But again, most companies starting in January. 
we're going to choose an admin password here. This is a very important password to remember. The administrator does all the setup for the preferences, decides if you, you know, which different types of activities you can use in QuickBooks, decides all the major changes in QuickBooks. It's an important password. Um, it is case sensitive, so if you use low, uppercase or lowercase letters, it's important to remember that also. Okay, so now it's going to go ahead and say, go ahead and name your company. So I'm going to go ahead and name it My Company LLC. I can change this name if I want to. It's not going to affect anything. It's just the name of my file. All right, so it's going to go ahead and create the base for me here. And then next we're going to go through a couple of setups that uh, choices that you can make. Now one thing you can see here, it says not responding one of the things I always wish that they would do in QuickBooks is instead of saying not responding there, it should say working. If you see that not responding, don't worry. QuickBooks is just thinking, okay? <laughs> if you see it for a long time, you might want to check your computer. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to customize QuickBooks for your business. I'm going to go ahead and say next. It's going to ask me here, do you sell services? Do you sell products? Or do you sell both services and products? What that setup's going to do is, you know, decide if you want inventory turned on or not, or if you want, you know, to have 1099s, do you want, you know, all these different choices. So if you sell services and products, you can put that here. Now, if you sell services only now and down the road decide to sell products also, you can change that at any time down the road, okay? Do you charge sales tax? It's telling me based on my business, you most likely should charge sales tax. Do I have a sales tax certificate? Yes, I do. All right, I'm going to stick with yes for now. Do I want to create estimates in QuickBooks? Okay. So do I want to create quotes, bids, proposals? You can choose yes or no. Again, this can be turned on later at any time. Into it's telling me, QuickBooks is telling me, most people in the manufacturing business aren't necessarily creating, creating quotes. Uh, so I'm going to leave it at no for now knowing I can turn it on later if I need to. Okay, are you tracking customer orders in QuickBooks? Meaning, do you track sales orders? So after you quote a client or, you know, when you create the quote of a client, you can turn it, once they say, yes, I'm ready to, to buy that product, you can turn it into a sales order. And what that does is it, it sets it apart as part of the, inventory, that there's some inventory in your inventory that's set apart or set aside for a sales order. Okay. It's not an invoice yet. It hasn't pulled it from inventory. You're not billing a client, but it's something to issue to your client to tell them, yes, we have these parts and we're going to sell them to you. Okay. So I use sales orders. Yes, I do. do. I use statement billing. Okay. What that is, a good way to think of it. So you know how when you have your lawyer, for example, they have two hours, three hours that they work on for you throughout the month. And what they do is at the end of the month, they send you a statement for those three hours. Rather than billing you every day, one hour, two hours, three hours, they send you a statement for the three hours for the month. So that's what it's talking about in using statement charges, okay? Or having a, a monthly statement that you send out. In the manufacturing industry, probably not so much, so I'm going to go ahead and say no. So I use progress invoicing. So what it's talking about there is, on a job, if you're 50% done with the job, will you be billing the client for that 50%? Or are you going to wait until the job's completed and usually just bill out 100% of the job at that time? So if you bill in increments, here's my estimate, 100% of the job, I'm going to bill you at 25, 25, 25, and 25. Till it's 100% complete, that's fine. On this one, I'm going to say, no, I don't use progress invoicing. Again, it's something that I can change later if my business changes. Do I manage the bills that I owe? I always recommend saying yes to this. <laughs> do I use accounts payable? Yes. What that helps you do is you can set up, enter your bill in the system, and pay based on your terms. It's always great to get terms with your vendors because it helps keep cash in your business. So do you want to keep track of the bills that you owe? Yes, you do. Which, again, when you enter your 
uh, bill for supplies that you buy from your supplier. You pay them in 30 days, but you got your bill today. So you put the bill in, and then it's going to remind you that in 30 days, you need to pay that bill. So I'm going to say yes. Do you track inventory? What does that mean? That means do you have physical product that you keep on hand in your business? Do you have parts that are kept in the warehouse? Do you have, uh, you know, if you sell T-shirts, do you have T-shirts on the shelves? Inventory is something that you hold that you sell, but it's physically with you on the property. If you are a reseller of someone else's product, you might not always hold the inventory on site with you. As in a manufacturing opportunity, once I manufacture the product, I keep it in my inventory until it's sold off to customers. So yes, I track inventory. Okay, tracking time in QuickBooks. Do you want to track time? Yes or no? Tracking time allows you to do things like job costing, allows you to assign cost of different people's time to different jobs, as well as to different tasks. So are they doing manufacturing versus repair work versus, uh, you know, sitting in the office and waiting for work to do. <laughs> so I think it's great to track time. It's also beneficial if you're using the QuickBooks payroll, which is the best way to track and do job costing. All right, so I'm going to say yes. Do you have employees? Yes, I do. I have W-2 employees and 1099. W-2, of course, means that they're official employees. You pay them on payroll. 1099 means you enter a bill and pay them by a check. All right. Now it's going to go through the chart of accounts, accounts that they recommend for our business. Um, guess not yet. <laughs> When do you want to start tracking your finances? This is an important part, okay, of setting up QuickBooks. Most of the time, I'm not going to say as of 1-1, one, one, unless this is the beginning of your business year. If you just started business this year, it's fine to choose 1-1 one, one of 2011. But if you're starting a new file off and starting using QuickBooks for a business that's been in existence for a while, you want to use the date prior to your year you're going to begin tracking in QuickBooks. So if you're going to start using QuickBooks for 2011, you want to put in there 1231-2010. The reason for that is that you want to make sure that once you start on 1-1, one, one, your balances are in there as of 1231. So your bank balance. You don't start out on 1-1 one, one with zero dollars in your bank if you have an existing, existing business, hopefully. You know, you'll start out with $500 in your account. And then on 1-1, one, one, if you wrote a check for $200, it would change that account balance down to $300. So to start tracking your finances, if you're starting to use the file for this year, instead of choosing 1-1, one, one, choose 1231. So you can put your balances in as of 1231-2010. Now here's the review of my income and expense account that I want to choose. So I'm going to go ahead and check off a couple extras that I like. Again, these are just recommendations. You can change this once you get in QuickBooks. Go ahead and say next here, and it says, congratulations, you've finished. Pops up the little, you know, how do I do this box, and you're ready to go ahead and, and go through QuickBooks and use your new file. 